Sonic the Hedgehog 3. Sonic. And a is a go and a Knuckles spinoff uh, on Paramount Plus. Paramount Plus has like 9,000 things coming out. We only mm-hmm. talked about like. Are we getting a subscription for them? I, I think like at this point we might have to because mm-hmm. so much is going to be on there. Mm-hmm. Plus it's like, well, it's like uh, Disney Plus is cheaper than the rest. It's like seven ninety nine or cheaper. Am I going to lose more brain cells because I'm going to binge all of the SpongeBob? Probably. You're probably going to get much dumber. It's yeah. okay. It's okay. We yeah, we already anyway. saw how bad my in, ability to talk is. In the realm of what we talked about earlier, meaning reboots and sequels, uh, the, the, um, the property that literally took the advice of the fans gets my support all the way. Meaning when they did the original trailer for the first Sonic movie, and it was this nightmare fuel, uh, evil um, devil rodent mm-hmm. rather than actual Sonic the Hedgehog, the director says, we hear you. We're going to make changes. And they change the look of the character for the fans. Mm-hmm. You win a lot of goodwill by doing that. Now, Sonic 2 isn't even out yet. I think it comes out in like a month and a half. Mm-hmm. They've already given Sonic 3 a go, which means it must be tracking high on numbers. Well, like how they redesigned the characters, I feel like it's more cuter and it's more profitable well, than yeah. that trash. That yeah, they I was going to say, you say fans, I say consumers. Like mm-hmm. he's responding to people who are going to pay for his movie. But, yeah, but exactly. the key is like they have to... In an age now where they don't look at you as fans, they look mm-hmm. at you as just numbers. Um, as numbers. Mm-hmm. Hearing somebody, even if it's for professional reasons, say, yeah. "Hey, we hear you. Have, you have no idea. They don't listen to people." Yeah, but I was gonna say like they they expect they don't, you to they expect they you to hate to people, it and pay but for then it anyway. They don't like if this movie preemptively no one's gonna go see because they didn't like it. Like they're mm-hmm. like, "Oh, we're not gonna make any money." I think it's cool if they did it out of solidarity with fans, but I just feel like to sort of have a. Uh, rounded perspective this is also oh wait you're not gonna buy my thing i'm i'm not going to do it that way i'm gonna change it Mm -hmm. i'm going to tell you how bad these industries are they they're worse they will both know you're not going to buy it and then be mad at you for not buying it Mm -hmm. they will make something awful they will tell you that you're the bad person for not i'm not joe rogan uh seth rogan wrong person not i'm thinking i'm thinking more um the last jedi i'm thinking Mm -hmm. ryan johnson they will make something awful they will tell you you're bad for not liking it, mm-hmm. and then they will get mad at you when it doesn't make enough money. Yeah, but that so doesn't matter. So in me. an in an age where you're not just a consumer, you're supposed to you're supposed to buy what they want despite whether you think it's good or not, and then they feel like they're better than you. Mm-hmm. Somebody even pretending to be your friend and, uh, and doing it for the fans is more than most people. They're starved for a little bit of like. Hey, thank you for not treating us like human garbage. One of the reasons I like doing the show with Brad is because Brad believes the best in people most of the time. Like he no, wants. This to is me believe. thinking the worst of the industry. I'm saying this guy, whether for profe- <laughs> for purely professional reasons, I get what, you what mean, most yeah. people are saying here is that at least he's acting like a professional. He is not te- calling yeah, you a piece of Lou. Sh- He's not treating you like a piece of shit and then expecting you to support him anyways. Yes, which is something that only a, a, an extremely stupid person yeah. would do. Or Sarah pe- Silverman. Yeah. Oh, did you see that um, we're getting Amy Schumer and Wanda Sykes and Re- uh, uh, Regina, what's her name? George? To, uh, no, t- doing no, the that's Oscars. that's mean cry now. Um, Regina King, I think. Regina uh, Kaling? Uh, King. No, King. Uh, I, was, it's, it, I was just like, and they're like, and I wonder why the Oscars are doing so bad because <gasps> nobody finds re, uh, nobody finds Amy Schumer funny ever. Amy Schumer sucks. She's a stealer of w- jokes. Wanda Sykes hasn't been funny in like 10 years. I was like, why don't you get like Chris Evans and what Gal... What are they doing? So I don't understand. The, the, the Oscars. They're hosting the Oscars. Mm-hmm. And then they're going to wonder why nobody's going to watch it. Are we still having it. the Oscars? Yeah. <laughs> I, I was like, imagine, I was like, get, uh, get um, Gal Gadot, get Kevin Hart, Mm-hmm. and get The Rock to host well, the Oscars. Well, Kevin, no, absolutely not. All of those people pass for me. I'm well, just saying, the no, general no. audiences would like them a lot more than the people they're bringing Gal in. Gal Gadot? Gal Gadot's awesome. Imagine all the people. Oh, she <laughs> pronounced it with the T. She, so I don't she came out in an interview after and says, you know, that was stupid of me. I know. So mm-hmm. she, she did a mea culpa. I give her a pass. Mm-hmm. She's got... Ow. She's got tons of charisma. No pass for me. Well, also... But you want to believe the best of people. Like, I love that about you. <laughs> yeah. I have... Uh, 
So wait, what's happening with Sonic? Okay, so too? so the yeah. point is that they've uh, they've already approved, uh, they've already given Sonic Three the go ahead, despite the fact that Two hasn't even come out yet. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then they're going to take Knuckles, voiced by the estimable Idris. Idris Elba, who all these people think should be James Bond, even though I think he's too hey. old. Um, Where's he, Jessica when she needs the? He's back getting me up. Uh, he's getting a, uh, a a show based on the character of Knuckles, who's going to be in the sequel, his own spinoff on H or on Paramount Plus. Yeah. So they're going ahead with all this stuff full steam ahead. Head. It's literally a Sonic the Hedgehog cinematic universe, uh, and it's getting expanded. Paramount has officially announced that the third Sonic the Hedgehog movie is in the works ahead of the sequel's upcoming release. I wonder if it will have Jim. Car- you don't like Jim Carrey either. Miracle nope. doesn't like anybody. See, I, I don't can- like Jim Carrey either. Thank you. Him and Tom Cruise, except for Thank different you. reasons. But yeah, We're I just get very annoyed by Jim Carrey. I don't think he's a good actor. Not interested in him at all. Well. I think he's. I love the cable guy. I love the cable. Gu- no, Larry, Rigby. the cable guy I love is the better. The Truman Show. So you guys, sorry, I like the Truman. I mean, mm-hmm. I will acknowledge that he did some good things. I just, I'm not interested. In and I love Ace Ventura and Ace Ventura too. Um, oh. three darts is too much. I don't get that reference. Uh, I don't get it either. So are you going to see Sonic the Hedgehog yes. two, three? Uh, expansion? two. We'll see. How, uh, we'll see how two goes. If three, if two is good, three is. Well, who's the target demographic for this movie? Children, adults, people my age who have kids. Yeah. So people my age who grew up with the character Sonic the Hedgehog who have young kids who will then they will take to go see this movie. Also, yeah. if you want like a real hardcore fan of Sonic the Hedgehog, I mentioned him earlier. Uh, black nerd comedy, uh, Andre Meadows, dude, he's like super hardcore, and um, he, he was talking about like these like reboots, and like he's really excited. But this like, isn't a reboot. Well, no, no, like they they made a Sonic. Um, the Hedgehog TV show that's called Sonic Boom and he was talking about it he was like it's not bad but those are for like hardcore like yeah. lifelong like I'm not lifelong I, I played Sonic the Hedgehog growing up I was mm-hmm. a Sega guy not a not a traditionally PlayStation or Nintendo guy mm-hmm. um, bef- at least before Nintendo 64 yeah. I am the target I'm the target demographic meaning Normie who knows exactly who he is knows who the bad guys are but didn't collect the comics and didn't play and, and didn't watch the animated series mm-hmm. guys my age who have kids who are young enough to, who can watch these adorable creatures yeah uh, take on dr robotnik mm-hmm. i i'm gonna say like i know i'm anti-reboot i don't exactly see this as a reboot it's, it's not slightly it's, it's different. just an adaptation uh, mm-hmm. and i do like i'm open-minded to this just because like there is an industry i think there is a need in the industry for movies that are like entertaining to adults who are taking their children who are also engaged yes. you know mm-hmm. and you have to understand that right now Pe- these people listening to fans, even for purely fina- p- purely financially motivated reasons, is what we want. Mm. We don't care if you like us. We care that you make the products that we want to yeah, see. That's we true. are sick of being told to pay money for stuff that we know we will not like, Who that has had people's political and uh, social agendas pasted on properties that they did not create, did not foster the growth of, have no uh, connection to other than being hired to make something in modern day, we want people that are going to adapt the things that we love without treating us like awful people. I don't care if you do it for purely financial reasons. Yeah. I care that you do it at all. I was going to ask you, uh, who is, well, like what studios behind this movie? Uh, Paramount? Paramount. Paramount, and then Paramount is smaller than like some other operations, right? Paramount just, uh, well, they're with uh, Viacom, CBS. So they're, they it's a fairly them. large corporation, okay. but it is uh, I was going to ask like if you felt like if they were with a smaller you know, Disney is pretty big. Yep. That they they are more accountable to probably consumers slash fans, yeah, which probably. are the same thing. Yeah, uh, like you know that studio doesn't have the budget necessarily to produce a flop the way Disney can like be well, like, well, we really wanted it to do it this way. They so. spent a lot of money to redesign Sonic. Mm-hmm. A lot of money. But yep. it seems like they had an and eye they, for the fact that this was going to be a universe. Yeah. So if they initially start off bad, they have lost. Yeah, maybe they invest the money up front, but yep. if they think this is ultimately a billion dollar production yep. mm-hmm. you know investing an extra 12 million initially is worth it and it mm-hmm. did it did much better yeah. than it i don't ha- know if that's what they invested 12 million the the movie did much did. the movie did much better and had mm-hmm. longer legs because of all the goodwill they had bought brought yeah. uh, they had built up by the director being mm-hmm. good with the fans on twitter not treating fans like awful people mm-hmm. investing the money to redesign the character saying showing that you're paying attention and listening to the fans that goodwill that they had built up by just 
doing what people ask of any business to do, which is make a product that people actually want to purchase, mm -hmm. has now off afforded them the opportunity to not just make a sequel, but launch a third and a TV yeah. show. Well, and yeah. I would argue that like it seems to me evidence that this they were they saw that this could potentially have a long term future and yep. like have several sequels. So they made the you know if you're dating someone <sighs> and you like really want to see a future with them, mm -hmm. if they're like hey. I'm not sure I like like this pattern of our relationship. You you take that feedback seriously mm. and you work on it, right? Yeah. Like with this one, if they, f instead of it being like, we're gonna throw something out there and if maybe enough people like it, we'll expand on it. They were like, yeah. we know we could do a lot of things with this. So we need to make sure we hook people early and exactly. adjusting yeah. the animation is thing. Good. And yeah. what I'm saying is that you're talking about this in this matter of fact way. You have no idea how much of a revelation this is in modern day Hollywood. This is not the norm. No, I'm not saying it's the norm, but like I'm just saying, you know, I can see that this is like uh, maybe an approach that a studio that needs to respond to the bottom line more than a studio that has an influx of cash yeah. has to. Mm -hmm. um, and again, I'm not emotionally tied to these characters, so as like as a, I, I'm offering an outside perspective of someone who's not. I'm not not a fan of. I know like, I'm familiar with yeah. it, but like I don't follow this because I enjoy the content. I'm just interested in mm -hmm. the way the ecosystem of the business works. That's I, true. I don't care about the. I don't care about Sonic. I care about them starting to listen to what the people that have made these pr these franchises profitable mm -hmm. and viable listening to what they want. Right. There's right. a reason why they go back to these because they've built up 20 years of character character growth, whether it's through the comics, whether it's through the animated shows. Uh, they have action figures. These mm -hmm. things have been built up on the backs of people that have supported these characters for decades. So to have at least one studio that's not scoffing at them and calling them uh, immature man babies for mm -hmm. wanting the characters to be treated with respect, I think that's something worth noting and worth supporting. Yeah, and so. like I said, like I don't know if I said this, but like, whether he did it because out of loyalty to the fans or to uh, For protect his bottom line, like it doesn't matter if you guys are getting what you want, right? Exactly. Like they think that we want the emotional validation. No, we just want you to do your job and deliver a good product. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that so much to ask for? Is that so hard to to get? Um, can I divert off topic for a second? Yes. Okay. Do you guys think we should get Podluck mugs? Yes. Because I'm trying to hide the logo that's on this mug and it would be easier if I didn't have to think about it every time I picked it up. What's the logo should. for it? I don't She's literally I'm just not going to cross promote another something that's not Tim Cast or us. Ugh. It's okay. okay. I it's would really appreciate a uh, no strong opinions mug. That would be fantastic. We should Jessica, do that. Jessica, do you hear that? Yep. I so, know she listens to this all the time and she feels like she's very updated because she listens to us. I, I just want to cover one more thing uh, regarding the Batman because it's coming out soon. Just we're just going to cover on it quick. Uh, Recently, we talked about, I talked about Reacher and mm -hmm. doing the, um, he read all 24, uh, the character of, Al, or the actor Alan Richson read all 24 books mm -hmm. before doing that show. Uh, we talked about James Gunn telling John Cena not to read uh, the Peacemaker comics. I just want to point out that Robert Pattinson seems to have a lot, a lot of strong opinions on past storylines from the comics that he would like to do mm -hmm. in future projects, which tells me that he's very, very invested in this character. Which mm -hmm. I think would be better. Yes. Yeah. So I, I it says Robert Pattinson wants hot to do Brett. Death in the Pan. What? I said hot, Brett. You don't get Ben Affleck back. Well, I, I'm I, fighting I, for Dane. We knew that was going. Not I know. No, I know he's never coming back. That's He's too old now anyway. Well, yeah. Okay. We're not getting Affleck back. Besides, he's not, th that DCEU Batman is not connected. This yeah, is not I connected know. to the main universe. And Robert Pattinson has an opinion of being an opinionated actor yes like mm -hmm. i just read recently that he did an interview and he was like oh yeah i refuse to hold the wands when because he was in harry potter yeah. at one point like the way they wanted me to he's like i held it like a gun because the other way felt stupid like yep. i think it's and like i love seeing the clips of him making fun of twilight while doing twilight press junkets like yep. i think it's better for this guy to do something that he's invested in because mm -hmm. like as far as we can tell he's got talent and like him having a strong opinion adds to the project yes yep. so it says he wants to do a death in the family uh, with the sequel he wants to kill off robin on yes. screen that is awesome that is a very famous arc he also wants to do a uh, court of owls which Yay. i thought was relevant because that was one of my predictions for this movie was they were going to at least hint at court of owls because i think there's a lot of uh there's several scenes in the trailers that point to the idea that the the waynes are are undercover bad guy were undercover bad mm. guys uh in this universe and i just love to see that he's invested in the project because mm -hmm. there was a there's a, a funny thing that happened earlier on he's got that very dry british sense of humor and he made a joke in like an interview saying like he wasn't working out 
to be Batman and people mm -hmm. got really offended by that. And I always took that to be like a joke because you kind of know, if you know the actor, you know he's probably kidding. Mm -hmm. But it, it kind of plays on the fact that he's a smaller guy. He's he's not as big as Affleck was when mm -hmm. he was Batman. Mm -hmm. He's not as big as... Um, Bale, Bale got really big too. Yeah, Him and, and Bale. both of those dudes got really bulked up for the role. But he's a younger version of the character, so he wouldn't have necessarily all that same amount of muscle put on. But I just love the idea that he's really invested in the character and he wants to bring these stories to life mm -hmm. because that means that if he does get to do more movies, he won't look like Daniel Craig looks in the last three James Bond movies where he just looks like he'd rather be anywhere mm -hmm. but making these movies. Mm -hmm. Like whenever he'd do interviews, he's like, yeah, yeah I don't want to do he's anymore. Like, we did another one. And then they offer him more money. Like, I think it was really just a ploy to get more money. And he's contract like, and stuff. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So so I just, I, I'm not even going to cover the story. We don't have to talk, go into depth. The point is he wants to do those stories. He wants to do yep. Court of Isles. He wants to do Death in the Family. It's very cool to see and I just I support that I support yeah, the I idea cool. that someone who is not treating these as if they're lesser stories yeah he's not treating them as if they're just a jumping off point for his career because he's already got a career solid in the making he wants to be faithful to the character he wants to adapt stories he thinks are emotionally evocative and relevant mm -hmm. I think that's great yeah I and to tie back to our discussion of reboots like it's cool to see someone adapting source material because I don't think that you should mm -hmm. just have to destroy everything yep. to make a new thing and also like there are storylines that I know like I'm gonna say commercial Batman like mm -hmm. I like the Dark Knight a lot it's one of my favorite movies yep. I've seen a couple but I'm not familiar with the source material the way someone who has read the yep. comics would be so it's mm -hmm. cool to see like different storylines be tied in in an authentic way yeah y usually the way you end up seeing it is through easter eggs like they'll, they'll you'll you can watch videos where they'll point out all of the uh, visual easter eggs that get used in these stories mm -hmm. uh that's usually the more when i think it honors like the fact that there are people who are diehard fans as well as people who mm -hmm. want who like it but just don't have access to it or maybe they don't pursue it on that level like mm -hmm. it, it appeals to all of them well yeah. also like if you want to catch up with like what's current in the comic books like um i recommend watching the dc animated movies because yep. that has a lot of story and like you get catched up to like the comic books of today and a lot more they're giving a lot more leeway mm -hmm. in their storytelling it's, it's like more violent that's yep. why i liked about it less uh it's considered less modern to uh, the there's less political polit mm -hmm. oh i can never say that word i'm not saying it political agenda uh, politicization yeah politicization, politicization. That, yeah I got it right there. okay there's less of that in there because there, it's just there's less eyeballs on it so it's mm -hmm. they're allowed to do more pure comic book storytelling yeah. Yeah. something a lot of it's just the medium of animated uh, film just lends itself better to that because type of it's super silly exactly so uh, Aquaman is not fu is much funnier in uh, animated than he is which uh, Aquaman because they made a very cartoonish yes. Aquaman no similar. not not the one that looks like Teen Titans guy. so we're okay. gonna see are we gonna go see the Robert Pattinson Batman yes, yes. absolutely we're gonna watch it for sure Tim is gonna watch it with us yeah. and also Hannah Claire um, this is a little bit like off the rail a little bit but to make you happy um, Disney Plus announced that they're not gonna move on uh, move forward with Beauty and the Beast prequel goodness series that they were planning to do they're not going to move forward with that yeah but they're still going to do but snow what white. horrible thing are they going to do instead snow white, snow white. And the seven magical cgi creatures because uh because um, also dwarves just, is offensive yes. i'm not going to say something a joke i'm going to make i'll make it to you guys later okay, okay. perfect <laughs> off camera we'll hear this yeah. joke perfect see that's the world we live in mm -hmm. these days but are we still going to talk about Pokemon? No, again? no, we're, no, we don't. It's mm -hmm. not relevant. Uh, it's, I just I, I had that article pulled up as a as a possibility, but it's mm -hmm. not relevant. I, I I try to stay away from as much of the drama as possible. Well, again, that was like an old photo. I don't know why she. I don't know what it is. It. So I am going to say. So I'm going to kick off. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you guys for having me. Yeah, this has been a ball. And I'm really glad that you guys are converting to my no more reboots uh, way of life. I have always been of this. Mine is more just uh, to, if they're going to adapt things, do it without being treating the fans like crap. Mm -hmm. I have, le like you said, my standards are like, I'm like the abused person who comes back. I'm like, maybe they'll do it better this time. But they never but will, they, Brett. They, they never will. They never will. We know this. Sorry, it's too loud. We know this. Remake um, Roger Rabbit. Because in Chip and Dale Rescue Ranger, they have a clip of Look, Roger Rabbit. I would Rabbit. rather them literally do an interpretive like film about a Dunkin' Donuts menu board Beautiful. than <laughs> any more remakes. I'm done. And I don't even watch them. I'm done from afar. That's how like just stale this is. What, what, well, I said there's a, there's a weird um, here to talk about this stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, it literally doesn't become news until it becomes a reboot. So yeah. we'll, we'll get there. 
What is going on, everybody? It is episode 58 of Pop Culture Crisis. My name is here with my co-host, introducing... 